Welcome to Fans of the Forge, and today we are recapping Season 5, Episode 26, the Keelong G episode, this never-ending season, where <laughs> now we'll be on Wednesday nights. Yes, starting up. next week. Yeah, so be careful. Remember that. Yeah. So uh, to my right, I have Chris. What's up? And over there's Teresa. Hi. And I'm Sean. Hey. So let's get into it. Our contestants this week, we have Rob, who's a part-time Smith with 10 years of experience, a former firefighter. Jason, a part-time Smith with 10 years of experience, who had some deal with skinning animals, so he got into knife making, also mentioned something about roadkill, do anything for a dollar. Yeah. Kind of funny. Yeah. From interesting, Texas. Interesting guy. Then we had uh, Michael, who is a part-time Smith with two years of experience, a... Uh, Great big beard on this guy mm-hmm. with uh, a mouth hole cut out. <laughs> I think it's for food efficiency so he doesn't get it caught in a beard. Well, I can tell you, I don't know if you noticed, but my beard is significantly reduced. Ah, yeah. um, back when I had a much fuller beard, uh, yeah, you do. You need to trim around the mouth so you can get food in there without getting it all over it. Mm-hmm. And even then, you still get food all over your face, and so... You need a friend as well. Yeah, you need yeah. someone there to tell you what's up, but... Yeah, that's what he's got going on. A.K.A. Spicy Mike, because he likes spicy food, as do you. Oh, would, we'll get there. Oh, we'll get there. <laughs> all right. We, uh, spicy Mike, <laughs> we'll get there. <laughs> and uh, we have Ryan, who's a part-time smith with five years of experience, the anti-beard bro, clean-shaven <laughs> Ryan, uh, ponytail man. Ponytail Pale man, one, yep. yeah. Who? Uh, ballroom dancing. Yeah, he's he's thing? into ballroom dancing too. So that's cool. To each his own. Um. So picks. Chris picked Rob to win. Mm-hmm. Teresa and I picked Jason to win. Teresa's underdog was Mike, and Chris and my underdog was Ryan. Yes. So, let's see how this all shakes out. So round one. What do they show? There's a little barrel, you know, an oak barrel. There's a cloth hanging. There's some object underneath it, right? Will Willis whips off the little cloth and dust. dust. <laughs> Magic. What? Okay. <laughs> what was going on there? I'm, I think they used some sort of special effect in, like, trying to make it look like a little magic yeah. trick. Yeah, magic. I enjoyed it. I don't think. They used I think magic. there was something there in the first shot. And then they cut to him just pulling on the rag separately. Mm-hmm. And then they made it, then you see the, because the dust didn't look real, the way it kind of floated out around uh, based on the way. I think it was some bullshit CGI. <laughs> magic. <laughs> yeah, it's magic. You got to believe. Believe in the power you gotta believe. of Will Willis. Yeah. Yes. Anyway. Well, I don't believe in Will like he could do that, but. Um, Maybe yeah. Doug. I could see it if it was Doug doing it. I feel like he might have some magic power. Maybe, right? Will pulls the the cloth away. Doug and his lightning ninja speed grabbed whatever was underneath, <laughs> and and you don't see anything. That makes the most there sense. I'll I'll be okay with that explanation. Or do you think there's some object that was painted green and you can do a green screen effect, see through it? That's probably what I'm thinking. I mean, if we got a hold of somebody that was on the episode, we might be able to find out for sure. Do we really have to care this much? No. No, but we do because we're silly. So uh, anyway, that goes to you have to harvest metal from this barrel and make a blade out of it. So you have to harvest the steel rings holding the barrel together and make a knife out of that. Um it's all thin. It's, you know, but you can, you know, uh, Will says, well, it's a whole big barrel of mild steel. You know, you're better off taking some from the barrel and then using mild steel to make a sand mire or do something like that. Right. Because you're not going to get enough metal from the barrel to make, you know. But they showed uh, a couple guys cutting and they had a pretty good sized billet. I'm like, well, that looks like enough to me. But what have you, I don't know. I don't know what the length parameters were. Maybe it had to be kind of long because I know a couple guys were like kind of worried about the length. Yeah. So uh, anyway, Rob goes with the Sanmai. Um, his blade was still thin, and he had some more steel after you know pulling that, stretching it out. Um, he quenched 
had a little bit of a warp. You know, no big deal, I guess. Uh, Jason goes for a San Mai, but for some fewer layers. And just because of that, just fewer opportunities to screw up the forge welding, which is yeah, makes, makes sense. Makes so sense. There's, there's less pockets between it that can right. cause any gaps. Right. And delaminations. Yeah. His uh, forge welds took well, and he did have a thin blade. There was a warp during the quench. Uh, move on to Mike. He attempted to make a forge welded billet of just the high carbon steel alone. Uh, he quenched early, but no warps, and he could finish in, uh, grinding that thing with a hardened, no big deal. Uh, while on the grinder, his hands were cramping up, so he pulls out a banana. Which is normal when you have hand cramps to tell you that. But I don't know, like, but the, the people will just bring fruit on set with them. I think they do bring bananas for this reason. I feel like they probably okay. just have um, like a catering table. You think it was craft service, craft service and he just went over and grabbed the banana. And yeah, like, brought it over to where he was working and then ate it. And then hams it up for the camera. He puts a little hot sauce on it. He's like, this is what I do because I'm Spicy Mike. All right. Here we spicy go. Spicy Mike. Okay, honey. I got some problems with this. <laughs> okay. Look at my Instagram story on my personal Instagram page going back, was it 19 weeks? Okay, you don't it have was, to get so it angry was, about it that oh, he doesn't know you. Oh, oh, I am going to get very angry about it. <laughs> if you look back on that Instagram story, I have two called Sriracha Banana and Sriracha Banana 2 Electric Boogaloo. Yeah. In which I take a banana and I dip it in some Sriracha yeah. and I eat the fuck out of those bananas. Oh, man. <laughs> so, guess what? I did it first. Spicy Mike. What if he did it 20 weeks ago right. but it wasn't... Had recorded you, we, we doesn't had matter it doesn't i had it out there in the internet ether before it showed up on the show did he say he was the first one that did it no no he didn't oh say okay that. so just saying you just it's not a coincidence he's... it's not a coincidence that we start doing this show about forge and fire oh and something oh, always stole your idea something something oh has what a sneak is, oh, is it more man. magic No, it was no. hot sauce on a banana. Yeah. And I, he's de- so it, it, but time travel. We don't know when that happened. Mm. Eh. Teresa, that's a little far-fetched. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's, that's, come on. We're going to bring this back down. Yeah, right. All I've got to say is there's going to be video behind us as I'm talking about all this of me eating sriracha on a banana, and I'm going to have a date stamp on it and everything. I put it out there first. Okay. Continue. Uh... Another thing that was funny about that was, you know, Will counted on time. So you have 30 minutes left to finish your blades or your bananas. Yeah. 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 yeah that, was, that was good. And then they all pulled out bananas and were eating them. That was like, what, round two, I think they did that? I think so. Yeah. That was good. That was that was funny. Nice They're all happy. Yeah. So uh, move on to Ryan here. Um, he was attempting a build with just high carbon. Um, he had a concern about his billet size, added some mild steel to it. Um, he had some little uneven heating there. Um, he had some delamination. They made it before commercial break look kind of serious, but it wasn't. It was just like one layer, um, on the side. Of course, steel was still good. Um, but he had some delams that were worse in the tang area, and then he was kind of dancing, rolling the tank along. So <laughs> yeah, he just kind of entertaining just ballroom dancing moves through the shop. So, moving on to initial judging, Rob had a great shape, extra long handle, had some D-lamps to fix. Jason, uh, had some of the biggest curves in a knife this season. It was pretty normal. It was yeah, it was it was pretty wild. Um, Mike he had some D-lamps, but a overall good construction. Uh, Ryan had some bad delaminations, so he got the boot. And that was our underdog for me and Sean. The big points out the door in the first round. Big points gone there. Round two. The contestants had to finish their handles using the wood from the whiskey barrel. Rob, he had to shorten the handle a little bit, and then he welded his flare back on, which we've seen in a few episodes now. Uh, The judges like that, that he's maintaining that flare at the end because all handles are better with that flare at the end just because it gives you something to keep the blade from flying out of your hands when you're going right. to swing it. Especially with those strength tests. Yes. 
And the, the, the Jay Nielsen Jamie pain Nader. train comes to town. <laughs> he really hates Connecticut or something. I don't know. <laughs> so he's also super tall, which you, it's not easy to tell from a lot of the shots that they, that they show, but it's very apparent when he's using the belt sander right. because he's squatting down to use the belt sander, whereas we've seen people, people we've interviewed that have have used yeah. like a milk crate to pop themselves up a little bit. And, right. And he looked like milk. Gandalf trying to get through a Hobbit house. <laughs> <laughs> he was just like, you know, he's hunched over. He said he's like six five. So. Yeah. But Jason, the judges were waiting for him to break his knife during his attempt to straighten it, um, but nothing happened. He cut the edge off to add more material to his handle, so he had the opposite issue. His was a little too short, so he he cut off his tapered edge and and went to add more material in between that piece. And then he had a gap in the end of his handle at the basically near the very end of the round, and uh, he was going to basically fill it with super glue. But he complained that he couldn't find wood dust because they keep the shop so clean. Yeah. There wasn't, like, like if he could just mix it with some wood dust and super glue, it would fill in the gap and right. look pretty decent. So he ends up putting glue on and then going to the grinder and, and grinding m- material off into the hole so that it gets stuck in there and fills in the gap a little bit, which I guess works. I mean, it's just I, cosmetic at that point. I mean, I guess he could have used some, some metal dust, too. I mean, the powdered steel. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, that, it would have looked weird, I think, maybe, if maybe it was because it was spot. a gap between, like, where the wood in the... If it was, like, a chunk of the wood missing, then he was trying to fill it in with wood dust to make it look a little more natural there. Mm. Maybe that was overkill thinking for how they were going to be right. judging it. Who knows? Well, and something else that came up, too, is uh, the judges were saying, well, you should harvest... Harvesting it from the sides of the barrel because it's curved, it's not going to work out well for them. They should harvest it from the top or the bottom. Meanwhile, no one did that, and everyone had great handles. Like, <laughs> no, there was not a problem whatsoever from no. that because it, it was so short, it didn't really make a difference. It was short, and the material was thick enough that you, yeah. could, you could get a straight piece out of it even though right. it had that bend. So Mike, he, as he's going through it, says, I'm not a fan of through tang knives in the mean all <laughs> while he's making a through tang knife and Teresa goes then why did you do it here yeah. if you don't like that style he doesn't like it he doesn't normally do you them you need to do your best work the one that you like to do and can do your best job on then do something you know you're going to be better at he struggled he was drilling holes and he couldn't figure it out yeah so he chose to cut his tang rather than drill his wood and then continued to grind his tang smaller and smaller. And this was the point where Will Willis was like, Bladesmiths, you have 30 minutes to eat your bananas. And then he like, him and the judges pull out the, yeah. the bananas. Spicy Mike decides, says, hey, put some hot sauce on there. Yeah, right. And then Will was like, we're not putting hot sauce on there. <laughs> All right, Will. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Will's not getting our hot sauce. Reminder, <laughs> go back to my Instagram story for the original hot sauce banana. I did it first. Disclaimer, Spicy Mike, I have no real problem with you. I'm just joking. <laughs> Judging. We had the strength test, which was the whiskey barrel ring chop. Rob... He made it through with a little bit of chipping. Uh, part of his actually broke off in the ring. Right. Jason had some minor chipping and edge rolling um, and some very narrow handle that was a little uh, rounded, so it was a little harder to hold on to. And Mike had some minor chipping, and his guard had some sharp corners on it that if Jay hadn't been wearing a glove, we probably would have dug into his hand a little mm-hmm. worse. And then they had one of the fan favorite tests sharpness apple slice test rob had good cuts very sharp jason very sharp mike also very sharp but his his was more of a wedged uh, geometry so that when it was going through it was slicing part of the way and then basically popping the tops off the rest of the way but it still cut through all of them so based on the ring chop the ring chop and and rob's having chipped such a huge piece out he ended up getting 
the boot, which means all of my points are gone <laughs> for this episode. I was at this point, I was swearing at the television, knowing I had completely blown it again. This is why we don't play games. And that Teresa <laughs> is going to win. Yes, I don't play games in public typically because I'm a very, we don't really even do it in private. Very anymore. sore <laughs> loser. We do play games occasionally. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, on to round three. The Kilo G. Uh, it's a Chinese pole arm from the Han Dynasty, the second century. We had to rewind that a little bit just to make sure we heard it right because it was like, wow, that's really old. It's pretty old. Um, had a fierce point for stabbing and slashing. This is almost as old as putting hot sauce on a banana. <laughs> <laughs> they did it first. <laughs> <laughs> Soy sauce on a banana. <laughs> oh, uh, actually, that might Don't not knock it till you try it. Sriracha on a banana. But that's what well, that's it was. What I did. Well, I know, but maybe they, these oh, guys came up yeah. with it. Oh. Uh, check their their Twitter feed or Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> from, from ancient the, scrolls. Yeah. Of yeah. Donald's Donald's look through the scrolls. Maybe it's on the wall. I don't know. Anyway, crescent shape uh, used to dismount cavalry or tear away enemy shields and was most effective um, when used to make a shield wall. Pretty badass weapon overall for Indeed. what it is. And I. Interesting shape to the blade, but and then the cool the crescent. Right, yeah, the was like multi-use. separate crescent, yeah. Um, so the specs were that the length of the double waves double edge blade must be twelve to fourteen inches. The crescent blade must be between seven to nine inches and must include a butt cap. So Jason's home forge. He spent the first day forging a billet of Damascus for the crescent. Um, day three was spent fitting pieces together so he can heat treat by the end of the night. Um, it was hard after a quench. And on day five, put the pieces together to make it look pretty. Um, first thing you notice on the beach is the, oh, the thing that he said. The first thing you notice on the beach is the butts, so make it look good. That's right. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And then he proceeds to chop a chicken in front of his chickens. Um, <laughs> shooting salmonella everywhere is what that's <laughs> what we noted and then it does a little cut to the chickens like right there and you just hear and then like, <laughs> <laughs> over to spicy mike's forge um first day was spent forging the main shaft of the blade using a press um on day three he broke his blade testing it um his hydraulic press blew a hose and spilled on the billet and you know caught fire mm-hmm Day five, it was spent, made the butt cap from the broken pieces, um, a bunch of random pieces. Yep. Uh, oh, as he was sitting there talking, on his workbench was a whole bunch of bananas and peppers <laughs> and stuff. So someone got artistic in, in there. For such a short shot. <laughs> like he was standing there for literally three, two to three seconds, and it was a pile of bell peppers and habanero peppers and jalapenos and bananas. Just a pile. There's no way he had those bananas and peppers at this place before that night, that day. Somebody went and got those. What? What, They can't go grocery shopping? Come on. It's too much. (laughs) If this guy loves bananas and peppers so much, maybe he's just on point all the time. Maybe he has a shit delivered pea pod. (laughs) Just fresh habaneros, bananas every two days. There was a lot there. That's like a high <laughs> yield. Like you have to have a pretty big pepper growing operation to have that many peppers. Moving on. <laughs> they cleaned out the stop and shop is what they did. So then they go back to Connecticut, I guess. They are Stanford now, wherever. Mm-hmm. For filming and uh, the judging. We've started noting which one we think looks better because I have a, a bit of a theory that the one that looks nicer is the one that bites it. Seems. Okay. It's a theory. Mm-hmm. It's not yet proven. So we noted that Jason's looks better. Um, the kill test was a ballistic dummy. So Jason's was fast, maneuverable, maneuverable. It will kill, but it did pick up a bend. Mm-hmm. Mike's was wide enough to break a bone, light and fast, it will kill. The strength test was to use the crescent to break the spear and then stab metal drums with the blade part. So Jason, uh, serious heft, edges are good, and Mike's was still sharp, less damage overall. The sharpness test was to cut a rope to raise a banner and then use flamberge mm-hmm. 
to cut the banner. Um, Jason's was very sharp on the rope and the banner. It will cut. And Mike's was sharp on both. It will also cut. And the winner is Mike. Because Jason's bend caused, you know, because of the Jason's blade bending. Yep. Mike won. Yay for spicy Mike. And my underdog <laughs> points. Yay for spicy Mike. <laughs> Congratulations, spicy Mike, <laughs> on your win. Wait, did we leave out the the whole dummy thing? Didn't the head fall off? Oh, oh yeah, yeah, the, the head fell off. That was at, Mike's. after the test. Yeah, whatever. yeah. But yes, no. Congratulations, Mike. All fake anger aside, that was nice job. All on your fake weapon. anger aside, there's some real anger in there. <laughs> no, only a little. It, it, he's more mad about the points. I'm, than about I'm much Mike. more really upset no about the crush. two points Teresa just got on top of what she already has for the season than I am about hot sauce on a banana. But I don't really know how to not win when I don't really know how to win either. I'm just picking people and they happen to be winning. Congratulations on your two points. So <laughs> what is our new point tally? Um, I've got 31. Chris has 19 and Sean has 17. All right. I'm almost at 20. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we are officially 12 and... 14 points behind. So maybe if this never ending season. season's not going to end. So it just keeps going. Right. Maybe we'll still have a chance. Who knows? Maybe we'll flip some streaks. I won't get any, and you boys will come up. That'd be interesting. We have to work together, Chris. I don't know how we could possibly <laughs> work together to make this work out in our favor. I'll just, we'll just have to compare. I did have one idea, and, and I know it's ridiculous, but I am going to mention it. Okay. I said that if Teresa like severely kicks our ass this season by so many points, then the next time we start doing points for a season, she has to start with a handicap. Yeah. And I reminded him that he won the Walking Dead pool twice <laughs> and kicked my ass in those. So I think just, it's okay that true. I got this one. I did win our right. Walking Dead pool. That's fine. All right. So anyway, that was the episode, season five, episode 26, the Key Long G. Congratulations to Spicy Mike. Spicy Mike for winning. Congratulations, Teresa, on your points. Remember to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. Subscribe, please. We are at like 130. Hey, we're getting All there. All right. And um, yeah, that's the episode. So thanks for watching, and we'll catch you in the next one. Bye bye. Bye. Spicy Mike. <laughs> it puts the hot sauce on the banana. <laughs> As do all, apparently. It's like, that's just weird. Yeah, there's like a this hole, mouth hole, he mm-hmm. cut into his beard. <laughs> mouth hole. What else would, would you call it? Yeah. Beard hole? <laughs> That's <weird>. Food hole? <laughs> Food hole. <laughs> Pie hole. <laughs>